cracking big dogs welcome back to the channel it's your boy nick big dogs gotta eat fantasy football if you're new welcome today i wanted to get a real real quick video out just a quick hit i'm my boy eric decker signing with the tennessee titans seen a ton of reports coming out i've seen a ton of articles a ton of information coming out on what people think Decker's move means for that offense as a whole, so I wanted to give you my thoughts after reading a bunch of articles and going through a bunch of content. I just want to give you the stats, the breakdown, my opinion. Let's get right into it. I'll be honest with you, I haven't even had time to kind of uh, digest the notes that I've written down, but I want to get them out to you, and I'll give you my analysis real time as I'm thinking through this. So obviously Tennessee, they got Mariota at quarterback. They took Corey Davis fifth overall, so he'll be in that wide receiver corpse with Rashard Matthews, who had a nice breakout year, and now they add Eric Decker. They have Delaney Walker at tight end. They have DeMarco Murray and Derrick Henry in the backfield, and arguably the best offensive line in the NFL, probably top three. That offense is looking really, really, really good this year. I'll be the first one to say I don't love Mariota as quarterback, just as like a real life elite passer. I don't think he's ever gonna get to the status of, you know, those elite guys, like even Drew Brees. I'm not even gonna mention like Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers, but like a Drew Brees or those kind of guys. But the floor that Mariota now has with all these weapons is a top 10 quarterback in fantasy. Let's, let's talk about Mariota for a second, these statistics. So over the last two years since he's come in the league, no quarterback has a higher pass touchdown rate in the red zone than he does. It's an incredible 35.1%. He turns into passing touchdowns when he's in the red zone. Brady's number two at 32.4%. Andrew Luck is at three, 30.3%. Mariota has a 33 to 0 touchdown interception ratio in the red zone. And I think that this signing of Decker makes so much sense here. And I love what they did here with Decker. So when you look at the last five seasons in the NFL, over the last five seasons, Eric Decker has the second most touchdowns in the red zone with 36. That's over seven red zone touchdowns a season. Pair that with Mariota's success in the red zone. So how is this offense going to shake up in terms of playtime, right? The top three guys, without a doubt right now, are Rashard Matthews, Corey Davis, and Eric Decker there. Tajay Sharp, that was cute when he was a thing. Henry Douglas, also not a thing anymore. This is what I see happening. Corey Davis underwent that ankle surgery, but he's, he's completely healthy right now, ready to go for camp. The Titans ran the third fewest plays out of three wide receiver sets, so 11 personnel. They only ran it on 42% of their plays. So they did a lot of two tight end sets, a lot of two wide receivers, and a running back. Absolutely gonna change now that they have three studs in their wideout core. What's gonna happen is this. I'm assuming Decker and Rashard Matthews are actually going to be the two outside guys when they do the 12 personnel two two wide receivers, two tight ends and a running back. A big reason why they ran the 12 personnel tight end was because they had Anthony Fasano on their team last year as the second tight end behind Delaney Walker. Anthony Fasano is an incredible blocker. He's like one of the top tight end blockers in the league, which is why they probably had so much success running behind him and why they ran that personnel so much. He's in Miami now. A little upgrade for JJ, a little low key right there for you, which means they're definitely going to be looking to run more one tight end sets or 11 personnel. So all three of these wide receivers should see plenty of play time. I do think Corey Davis is going to start on the bench in, in two wide receiver sets, Decker and Matthews on the outside. When they, when they call the 11 personnel and there's three wide receivers on the field, it will be Davis, Matthews, and Decker running out of the slot. When you go back to 2015, which is Decker's last full season, he ran 68% of his plays out of the slot. In that season, he had the fifth most receptions in the slot with 56 and the third most touchdowns with seven. So he's obviously really good in the slot and that's where they'll probably utilize him when he's in that. Now, obviously there, there are definitely concerns here. One is that they're a run heavy team. They love to run the ball, right? Eats up clock, DeMarco and Derrick Henry are both going to eat. DeMarco's going to get a ton of touches this year like he did last year. And they're just a slow offense. They're methodical. And they ran the fifth fewest passing plays, you know, per game in the league last year. They only passed the ball 31 and a half times per game. Not a very high volume. With all these weapons, you know, it's going to be hard for everyone to eat, obviously. I do think that Decker is in a really good spot to, you know, capitalize here. When you look at the last couple seasons, Delaney Walker's led the team in target share. So he had 26% of the targets in 2015, 25% of the targets in 2016. So he's he's eating up a fourth of those targets, right? What that kind of tells me is Mariota, I don't think he particularly loves Delaney Walker. I mean, I'm sure he does, but it, it tells me more so where he's looking on the field. He loves to, he loves the big body over the middle. He loves his safety valve. He loves his blankets there. And that's exactly what Decker's gonna be when he's running out of the slot. So I, I actually think this move, I mean, first of all, obviously it hurts 
Davis. It hurts most of the players on the team. It hurts Davis most of all because I think Decker's going to be the second wide receiver with Matthews, at least to start the season. And it hurts Delaney Walker because oh, those over-the-middle kind of targets, those slot receiver slash tight end targets, I think a lot of them go to Decker, especially in the in the red zone. And when you actually look at the red zone, right? Like Delaney Walker had 16 targets inside the red zone last year. Not a huge number. He's tied for, I think, 21st in the league, right? But then when you go in, when you move closer into the 10 zone, you know, inside the 10-yard line, Delaney Walker only had five targets. So that's a major drop-off. DeMarco Murray and Rashard Matthews tied for the team lead with only six targets inside the 10. So he sp he spreads the ball around and that's probably why he's so successful because he, he utilizes the matchups. And I think Decker's a great piece there. Uh, there's no one guy that he loves to use more than another guy. And I think Decker could play that role. I think he could be his go-to guy in the red zone. Right now, when you're looking at ADPs, uh, obviously this is, I'm making this video like a day or two after the signing of Decker. So I'm not gonna get accurate ADPs of where people really see the three different wide receivers. Uh, this is from the month of June. So it's, it's June 19th right now, I'm making this video. So everything from June 1st to June 19th, these are drafts from MFL 10s and and another cash league. So they're real, they're real ADPs. Corey Davis is the first wide receiver off the board for them. Wide receiver 31, 65 overall. Then Decker, 95 overall, wide receiver 39, and then Matthews, wide receiver 41, 101 overall. So you have Davis, 31, Decker, 39, Matthews, 41. I think that's all switched up. If Decker's gonna be on the outside while Davis sits, then Decker needs to be the first guy going off the board. If I had to put my money where my mouth is, give an over under of touchdowns for Decker on the year, I would say seven and a half is the over under, I would take the over there. I, see, I think we'll see a lot of like six catches, 40 to 60 yards and a touchdown from Decker. I, I think we see a lot of those games. And then like, you know, the bigger games will come from the outside guys, but they'll be less consistent. I really like Decker. I think his value is gonna be really nice in Tennessee for where you're gonna have to draft him. If you're getting him 95th overall, which is 10th round in 10 team, 10 team league, I love him there. But again, you have to remember, this is gonna be a run heavy team. They have a lot of weapons there, but they do have a really good line. Mariota succeeds in the red zone where Eric Decker's made all of his money, basically. Don't forget, I know he's white, but he's a big ass target. He's like 6'2", 6'3", like built, you know? So he really prospers down there when linebackers have to, have to cover him from the slot. I see Decker really being that go-to guy in the red zone, and I think a lot of people are going to write him off. Just they're going to say, "Oh, there's you know, there's too many weapons, there's too much to share over there." Let's go with Corey Davis because he's exciting and new and blah blah blah. But Rashard Matthews is good, man. He had a big year and he's a good player. He was good in Miami. He just never got the opportunity. He finally did last year and broke out. Wide receiver 11 in fantasy. Um, and like I said, Decker's always been a beast. Second in red zone touchdowns over the last five seasons with 36. Obviously Peyton Manning played a role in that, but still that's his spot. And now he's going to an offense that's gonna be good, way better than he's played with the Jets the last couple seasons. So Decker's my go-to wide receiver in this offense. Matthews and Davis, I'm not really sure where, you know, I, I think they should be right around the same spot. Davis obviously offers the least value. He's going 30 to 40 picks in front of both of them. I don't like that at all. Walker definitely takes a little bit of a hit here with Decker coming on. Um, still finishes the top six tight end in the last two seasons. I think he'll probably drop back into like the six to eight range this year. So I'm not gonna overdraft him. But I mean, overall, this this cements Mariota's floor. So many weapons, so many good options everywhere. Uh, I don't think this hurts the run game at all. I think they're still gonna continue to be a run heavy team behind one of the best offensive lines in the NFL. Bottom line here is I really, really like Decker and I think he's gonna be a great value in leagues. And I think he's gonna score a ton of touchdowns there. So that's that. I hope that was information. I hope it enjoyed. I'm sure there could have been more. And I, l listen, a lot of this information, I don't gather on my own. I read a lot of content. So fantasyguru.com, Pro Football Focus, uh, 4 for 4, guys like John Paulson. All these, all these sites are really good. Some of them are paid. Some of them are free. A lot of them have podcasts where you can listen to really good shit for free. So I definitely suggest checking out those three content suppliers, I guess you could say. But um, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We'll be bringing content all off season. And uh, I'll talk to you homies later. Peace. Uh, I found you, girl, I like